The top story this evening, acting government communications head Pumla Williams says that she hopes the State Capture Commission, headed by Deputy Chief Justice Ray Zondo, will restore the damage it has caused. She broke down as she opened up about months of torture at the hands of her former boss, Faith Mutambi. Williams retold of sustained emotional and verbal abuse by the former communications minister, saying she had needed the support of colleagues and even medication to carry her through. She also testified that uh, former President Jacob Zuma knew what Minister Mutambi was doing and did not protect her. Well, joining us for more on the story on the State Capture Commission of Inquiry and some of its developments this evening is a political analyst, Professor Dirk Kotzer. A very good evening to you, Professor. We thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, firstly, let's just have a look at one of those clips that played out at the testimony today. I had panic attacks. I saw torture going through my, my body again. I never thought in this government people can do such things. I was tortured for weeks and Mtambi did the same thing to my body. And that's why I wrote this letter, as a way of trying to, to get her to understand what she was doing. One, she was cheating the state because basically I was being paid because she wanted that procurement at all costs. She wanted to steal at all cost. That removing of all those functions, it was, a, it was a ploy to remove the finance and procurement away from me. They knew that they have removed me from doing cabinet work. I was going to be a nuisance. And they decided that the procurement and the finances must be removed from this woman. And that's basically what they did. Well, of course, uh, the inquiry did resume today with uh, Ms. Pumla Williams, the Deputy Director General of GCIS, continuing with her testimony. Uh, having made scathing statements there, also, Professor, we're seeing a very, very emotional uh, Pumla Williams. At one point, she was even quivering, also uh, having to take a sip of water in describing her testimony. Let's actually talk about the extent of the rot that we've actually seen in government departments from some of the relevations in the inquiry. Yes, well, we have seen this is now the beginning of the third week of, of testimony. Um, and what we've seen, first of all, was the Treasury, or the, the head of procurement of Treasury that spoke then the former Minister of Finance, Kibisi Jonas. And what we are now seeing is the GCIS. Uh, that we, the former uh, CEO or the uh, di director general, as well as the acting one, and so the focus is very much now on the communication side. And what we have seen, what has come out uh, over time now, is the way in which the Gupta family tried to get to take control of the money or the budgets available for GCIS, um, because they were responsible for the communications uh, services of of the government the adver advertisements that they put in the media, the public media, um, as well as, uh, for example, uh, advertisements for, for appointments. Um, so this, it was, uh, as, as she said, around about 600 million that was available. So what, what really was, I think, important is, is that it was a two-pronged approach. On the one hand, the Guptas wanted to get the money themselves, that they could uh, uh, use it um, in their media, the, the New Age and ANN7, but at the same time it also to some extent set the agenda for the type of message that came through the communications because it went through their, their own channels, as I said, ANN7 and, and the, the New Age, um, and therefore they could frame the message of these communications.
Yeah, let's just also discuss, you know, some of the the individuals that have been called to testify. Uh, we've seen uh, throughout the start of the inquiry with SMSs uh, taking place during tea breaks. Let's talk about ANC, NEC member Zizi Kodwa encouraging party members to testify. But it seems as though absolutely nothing at this point in time has been said about the discipline of some of those being implicated from some of the disturbing revelations that we've seen. Yes, I think what, what is going to become very uh, important and interesting is the, the fact that the, the commission, the judge, the chairperson allowed or arranged that they will allow for cross-examination. Um, and what we are possibly going to see is when the, the two sides really come face to face, then there will be a very intense interaction between the, the different um, uh, the implicated persons as well as the, as the witnesses. Um, and I think we, we are going to see a, a lot of revelations then also. Um, I think the, the fact that, for example, even one of the Guptas, AJ Gupta, well, is willing to, to testify but by video and not in person here in South Africa, is another indication that they are taking this very seriously. It is certainly going against what they want to see that is happening um, at the uh, commission like this, because I think that the judge, also the chairperson, complains about the fact that there are many witnesses who are not willing to come forward, that they are feel to be intimidated um, by others, and that they therefore are not willing to participate in the commission. So that, I think, is going to become one of the main obstacles for the commission to overcome, is to create a sense of safe space for the witnesses so that they can speak their mind there. Definitely. Professor, let's just have a look at uh, some of the other highlights that took place this afternoon. The fact that Mtambi continued, uh, President did nothing. And he continued, she continued to wreak havoc in the department. The President was not interested. And what I would insist the president knew what was happening. And that is the reason it never bothered him that the post of a director general is not being filled. It suited him that the status quo could be in that, in, in that way. Now, Ms. Williams made reference to uh, the former president, Jacob Zuma, knowing exactly what uh, Faith Mutambi had done and, and not protecting it. Let's talk about the involvement of these critical institutions like a government, the credible institutions such as the Hawks, as well as the NPA, and the lack of leadership that we have seen in, in, in having it taken so long even to remove NPA head uh, Sean Abrams, uh, as well as even union members like, like Sapu, regardless of the damning evidence that had already come forward? Yes, I think this is the, the beginning of this commission is, I think, very important for the government. It is very important, I think, because it becomes now something which is in the public space, which is a, a visible to the public in general. Because for quite some time since February, when President Ramaphosa was appointed as, as president, there was initially some initiatives, um, for example, the in investigation in the Free State Dairy Farm, and then it became quiet. And I think uh, many people, the public in general, felt that there's a lack of progress. I think now since the, the, the commencement of this commission, um, there's now, on a daily basis almost, uh, on TV we can watch what is happening, and a lot of revelations are made. And I think that is something which is comforting for the, for the Ramaphosa leadership because at least it appears as if something is being done. But I think one of the critical factors in future is going to be is for the Hawks and the NPA really to get there, uh, to complete the work that they are supposed to do. Um, because uh, since the, the, the removal of Sean Abrams as the national director or when uh, um, it, it means that there is no excuse anymore for the NPA to, to start to, to make pub progress in public. The same applies also to the Hawks, because the two must work hand in hand. The Hawks are doing the investigations and the NPA must do the prosecutions. Um, so from that point of view, I think it is important also that it's not only seen to be investigating 
officials at the lower level, but also the politicians who ultimately were responsible, politically responsible for what happened. And I think that's going to be the main test. Um, it's much easier to implicate uh, or to investigate officials at the lower level, but once it starts to touch the political leaders, um, then certainly it's a test to what extent there is an, a very specific commitment to, 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 to pursue the anti-corruption program of, of the government. Definitely. We thank you very much for your time this evening. That was political analyst Professor Dirk Kotza on the State's Inquiry Commission as it enters its ninth day.